Hello. Well, we've started the week uh, selling uh, the Aussie dollar and certainly looking to buy the US dollar across the curve. Uh, and this is really thematic of Asian traders coming in and looking very much at the non-farm payrolls number that we saw on Friday, which is, was certainly very, very strong indeed. It was broad-based across all sectors. There was job creation everywhere, uh, and certainly the good revisions to the previous two uh, payrolls numbers suggest this was a very, very good quality number. Cash earnings were up 0.4% on the month, which again was a very good number. And you can totally justify why we saw such an explosive move at the front end with a two-year moving up about 11 basis points on the day. And it's 64 basis points has really broken out. If you look at the Fed Fund's future for December next year, and again, that's pricing in 64 basis points for the Fed Fund's rate to be. Now, it's still well below where the medium estimate for the Fed is. And of course, when we get into the December 18th meeting, there is a good chance that we're going to see the board look to change and remove that considerable period of time before uh, when the tapering to when rate rights go up and, and certainly become more de data dependent central bank. Uh, that seems to be probably in the price now, uh, but you can see the divergence we're seeing there. When you saw the bank, Central Bank of Germany on Friday coming out, the Bundesbank downgrading their growth forecast very much in line in a thematic that we saw from the ECB last Thursday. It does suggest that you can un totally justify why we're seeing such a big moves in the dollar at the moment. We're seeing clear divergence coming through. So this week for me is really going to be around watching the Australian dollar. The Australian dollar continues to have a significant downside for 2015. Most strategists are recommending short Australian dollars against the greenback or against the Canadian dollar for 2015. I totally advocate that position as well. We're looking for sort of 77, 78 cents in this down move over the coming months as well based on divergence and the credit rate swaps market pricing in 29 basis points of cuts coming through as well. So certainly the dollar remains my favourite currency. It remains the market's very much favourite favourite currency, but I think rightly so as well. Today we have seen the Bank of International Settlements con showing some concern about the strength that we have been seeing in the dollar and certainly what uh, and, and the impact that's going to have on emerging markets. So certainly one to watch. I think as well if we stay on the Australian dollar theme, this week's going to be very interesting to see what happens in China. We get the trade balance numbers today. We are expecting a slight weakening, or the pace of growth will still be strong, or a slight deterioration in the pace of growth in their trade balance numbers, uh, certainly in their exports and their import numbers as well. Later in the week, we get financing numbers with the aggregate financing numbers expected to grow a little bit above 800,000, uh, sorry, 800 billion uh, renminbi coming through. Then we get the, uh, the industrial production numbers. They're expected to be fairly weak compared to where they were last month. But I think as well, what's going to be very interesting as well, we get the, uh, the working conference numbers that start tomorrow. Now, that'll be very interesting because this is where potentially we're going to get their growth targets for 2015. There seems to be some media speculation that growth target of 7.5% will be downgraded to around about 7% or 7 to 7.5%. The M2 growth numbers will probably be revised down to 12%, and their current account deficit as a percentage of GDP will probably be between 2.1% to 2.5% or something like that. They will allow that to, to slip a little bit to allow better growth coming through. So I think that's going to be the interesting thing as well, of course, watching what happens in Europe this week where we get the targeted uh, long-term refinancing operations on Thursday. That's going to have massive implications for the ECB. The ECB, as we know from Mr. Constanzio recently at the ECB, suggesting they are looking at this number very closely. If we get a take-up much less than $150 billion, it suggests that the banks, or certainly the central bank, are really going to have a hard time get achieving that balance sheet expansion, which they said they intend to do. Uh, and to try and get to 2012 high. So if we get a lumber less than, say, 150 billion euros in take-up from the European banks, we'd expect to see the euro continue to sell off a bit. We'd expect to see European bonds continue to contract or uh, certainly see buyers coming through, as the idea here is that quantitative easing could be announced as early as January 22nd. That's still not my base case, but certainly there's been a lot of media reports over the weekend that suggest that could be the case. Also, I think this week as well, it's been very interesting just to see how the, Euro, uh, the Australian banks trade. Our opening call for the Australian market today is slightly higher. My personal belief is that dips in the banks become very good buying opportunities, especially with the cash rate coming off quite sharply this year, expected to be down 50 basis points. That reinforces the yield trade. I think as well what we've been seeing here is the potential capital requirements from the banks will be around 16 to $25 billion. That's fairly achievable amongst the banks. Certainly they'll be doing that through, through pricing restructuring. French potentially for a fully underwritten or a couple of fully underwritten dividend reinvestment plans over the next few years. But the way that banks have been able to absorb these charges over the years has been very interesting, and we expect that to be the case as well. So we don't think this is particularly onerous uh, on the banks. In fact, this has been largely in the price, and the banks have held up quite well. So I, don't, I think this has been largely speculative. 
uh, and from the amount of money that should be raised should be fairly well absorbed by the banks over the coming years and also I think higher capital ratios will be very positive for, for in case we do see a big downturn and a, a repricing ocean of, of Australian assets so certainly we'd be I, I'd be looking to buy dips in banks based on what we've been seeing from the um, from the from the moves from the financial um, regulations that we've been seeing over the weekend.